And uh, so we're really excited to dive in all about Grace and uh, what you've been doing the last year. I think it was about a year ago that we connected on Instagram and your first message was kind of, I don't know if I have the time or I want to commit. And then you said, oh, let me just meet with you guys and see how it goes. And we'll <laughs> Yeah, a year later. So we're so excited to kind of do a year round recap of all the wonderful things that Grace has been up to. Yeah. yeah that's I, crazy. In a when, year. I, when I met you last year and we did our interview and you're like, Hey, this is what I want to do. I was like, after the meeting, I told Jen right away. I was like, she is impressive. I think as uh, no, you're fine. I was like, she has what it takes. So yeah. I was excited. Then, yeah. It's been, it's, I can't believe it's been a year. I remember filling out like the, your guys's packet when you sent it out. And it was like, how many deals do you want to do this year? And I think I wrote down like 12 or something. And I remember thinking like, that is crazy. I'll never do that. Um, and then I almost, I about did like in terms of unit, I did in terms of units. I don't know if I did 12 deals, but. You surpassed the unit count, which is awesome. Yeah. Well, I do give you uh, all the credit, really, because everything that we just went over, you always came to our meetings every single week. Jen and what I would always say with like some of the greatest questions mm -hmm. every single week, there were solid questions. You're always taking action one way or another. And uh, so, you know, you were making it happen. Yeah. So if you could just kind of share like from the student perspective, because that's really what you showed up as, you know, as a former teacher. You know, there are students who take the notes, they do their homework, they put in the time and the effort, and they come with really great questions. And just kind of giving us and everyone else a little bit more about like what that looked like, you know, from week to week, you know, what was it that you were doing behind the scenes um, so that you could make our Zoom meetings really productive and purposeful? Yeah, that's a really good question. I think I just knew that I'm paying for this. So I better do every single thing that they're teaching me and make sure that this doesn't go to waste and that every 30 minutes that I get is super valuable because I mean, you guys have like 20 years of experience. So I can't let that 30 minutes every week go to waste. That's 20 years of experience that I get to tap into that I never how do you get, you don't get 20 years of experience any other way like that with just one year of real estate, unless you have a mentor. So I just always wanted to make sure that that time was super valuable. And in general, I was just really excited to like get stuff done and make money and get experience myself in real estate. But as far as it, what, what it looked like every week, um, I think just putting one step forward and just making sure I wrote notes of what I needed to do for the next week so that I made sure I had questions and had follow-up questions and just, and put in the work. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I, I appreciate you just kind of reflecting. I know it's almost, it's tricky to think about like what your business looked like a year ago versus now, but you know, can you kind of give a 30 yeah. second <laughs> snapshot? <laughs> Yeah, before we got on here, I was thinking like, okay, I was trying to remember like, where was I at? And I think, well, last March I had like a year ago from right now, I had one rental property and now, and it was our first, we were only like a month in. And then I think when we started, when I started the mentorship, I had three rental properties and then the mentorship just exploded with like creative financing. And I bought, I think between I've wholesaled two and bought four. So I've done six creative deals, which is really awesome since August. That was the first one that I did um, or put under contract. And then we got an eight unit and then a few other single family houses, which I think puts us at 18 or 19. I need to double check, but it's been a roller coaster. <laughs> Earl is on fire. Uh, well, and that's exciting too. And you're also wholesaling is what you said too, right? Yeah. Doing a little bit of that. So, and that's, what's really fun about it is these creative deals for sometimes some investors, they never even see this as an opportunity and yeah. so you realize that this is a great solution for some folks. Once you understand the ins and outs and mm -hmm. that's a lot of stuff that we've worked on together, but it's not overly complicated once you understand some of the basics, right? Right. And I was just thinking that, like, as I said, I was reflecting before this call and the wholesale doing the wholesale deal I'm doing right now should close hopefully next week. And it has been so little work 
because I knew how to do it and had bought other deals. Like the first time you do a wrap, the first time you do seller financing, yeah, it's work because you got to figure it out. But once you figure it out on one deal, it just gets so much easier. And this wholesale, I can look at it exactly like the money I'm making on that wholesale is exactly what I've spent on this mentorship. So you can say uh, with 100% certainty that I have made my money back. And that's just on one deal. That doesn't include the four or five other deals that I did. Um, but it's just really nice. I'm like a very transactional person, like, okay, this equals that. And to be able to know that I easily made my money back in terms of experience and all that stuff is a really good feeling. So the return on your investment yeah. has been Powerful. pretty fruitful. Yes. Uh-huh. A hundred percent. And, and honestly, it has been on our end too. And the way it is not financially, because, you know, that's not what it's about. It's about helping other people grow into their business because not only that too, but some of you folks may or may not know is that one of your deals that you have for sale, one of the folks on our team saw this deal and was like, oh, pick me, pick me. Yeah. Right? Isn't so, that crazy? And so it's also having that community too, network, which is, yeah. is definitely yes. I think, uh, equally important. Yeah. And I know that like moving forward, I will just like have known so many more people from your team and the people that are in the mentorship, you guys, and I'll meet so many other people just from knowing those people. Like it'll just be like a domino effect, which is really awesome. Well, and that's, what's really about having that abundance mindset. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say that like attracts like, and with that abundance mindset that we just continually like talk about so much because there's so much out there. Yeah. Awesome. What would you say is the biggest like learning curve or um, I don't want to say struggle because I feel like real estate, there's always, you know, ups and downs, but you know, is there one thing you're like, wow, like I'm glad I had you guys in my back pocket, <laughs> I had Joe's number, I could call him and it like saved the day. Can you kind of think of like an incident where you were super oh, glad? Absolutely. When you trained my attorney, I've probably <laughs> taken me like six months to figure out and what to say to him and the answers to his questions. And you were on the phone with him for like 30 minutes and got it all wrapped up. Like that was, that made the entire mentorship worth it for those, for that one hour of your life. You know, we've had to do it. So I understand how important that is. And once you have that great relationship and the attorney understands and they understand the ins of outs of why that works this way. Yeah. That just, it's fantastic. So. Yeah. Just that in and of itself was so valuable. And like, I always think about like, yeah, anything you need to know is out there for free. If you want to put in the work to figure it out, like I could be all like, I think about like, I could represent myself. I could do my taxes if I want to sit down and read and understand, but why would I do that when I can just pay for somebody else's experience? And then they teach me all the major points and the lessons that they've learned that I don't then have to learn myself. I can learn it through them. So I'm all about like taking the elevator up and just investing in my education to just keep me moving and scaling instead of trying to figure everything out the hard way in the long way. Well, I think sometimes it's a great point you bring that up. Sometimes we as humans get in our own way because yeah, you can figure out every single thing, but do you need to, or do you yeah. really have is the time? Smart? No. <laughs> Well, I always felt like it's always been the best experience is when you have somebody looking over your shoulder, guiding you through any type of process. Mm -hmm. And especially when you're dealing with something like a house, which is usually the biggest sale and purchase of a person's lifetime. So when you're dealing with that, there's a lot of intricate things that could happen. And you're in part of that process. Now it is always, I felt best to have somebody look over to make sure that just all the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted the correct way, have the attorney's doing their job, which is best to make sure everything is done correctly. And it's about having surrounding yourself with a team because mm -hmm. yes, you could do everything on your own, but that's a really tough task to do. Mm -hmm. And to have a good attorney and have some good folks around you, like you said, it, it kind of speeds up the process. And, you know, as far as on YouTube university, I think you can learn a lot on mm -hmm. there, but I think a lot of that is for, I can't say entertainment purposes, but it almost is because if you need to know these find intricacies of how this stuff works. You, you almost need somebody to hold your hand through the process to make sure that you're doing the correct way. Mm -hmm. Especially when you deal with creative, creative finance, deals, absolutely. if you're going to, you know, buy your first deal off the MLS and go to a bank, do you need 
somebody look over your shoulder, it's probably still best because you're dealing with a lot of money. But when you start dealing with the investing side and some of these things, it's uh, definitely helpful. I, should, I know for sure from my own experience, it has been. Yeah, absolutely. I gotta say, you've inspired us as our you know backdrop here is a little different. We're from upstate New York and we're now in Florida. Um, I think it was come fall, you decided that you could walk away from your W-2 and take on real estate full time and just kind of, you know, share that part of where you were able to spend your time mm -hmm. for a little bit um, because you do reside in Iowa, but you were able to kind of travel a little bit. Yeah. So yeah, I late this summer or past summer, I quit my W-2 and put something that made me super confident about it is I knew understanding creative finance and rent to own and wholesaling that I could easily bring in income quickly with your rent to own down payments and the wholesale assignment fees and all of that good stuff. So I felt confident that I knew like where I could get capital and where I could make money. And um, I decided to try and live in Mexico for a month. And I went there to Mexico City and just did everything on my computer, which is what I mostly did anyways. I did have my boyfriend as boots on the ground back home. Um, that was super awesome to have that freedom and know like, okay, my goal is to build it out so that I can do this all year instead of one month. So that was super fun. Well, that's what, it, well, you inspired us because yeah. when you went and did that remote and, you know, we were sitting in New York and it was starting to get to the cold season. We were like, we want to do something like that too. And now here we are snowbirds. So where we're spending a few months in Florida. Mm -hmm while our friends in New York are uh, freezing and showing us like snow on, you know, Instagram and whatnot. So that's a great job. I mean, it's, it's amazing yeah. you're able to recognize that you can do this anywhere. Um, and the extra thing with creative finance is you don't need to have that W-2 to buy properties anymore either. Yeah, that's a, first of all, I'm so happy that you guys did that. That makes me really excited that you say that we, like I maybe inspired you a little bit. And second, yes, that's the other thing with like that question of, oh, how are you going to buy properties if you don't have a job is like, I feel like the number one question that stops people. And that's why I wanted to learn in creative financing because I knew at some point, I didn't know it'd be so quick, but I knew eventually I would want to leave. And so that was a huge reason as well that I wanted to learn creative financing. And I'm so glad that I did. <laughs> and you had a solid job. I mean, it wasn't yeah. like you were. yeah. Yep, you know. I was an engineer for an aerospace company and I had definitely a um, a really good job, but I knew I can always go back. I can always go back if it doesn't work out, but you what if go it worked back. out amazingly? <laughs> you thinking of going back? Heck no, I, I could never. I could never. <laughs> I can't even imagine. Yeah, no, I understand. I just celebrated my two year W2 free. Mm -hmm. Uh, just last week. And it's a great feeling to have that. that yeah. independence, right. And that's, and it, you didn't inspire us a little bit. You inspire us a lot of it because when I'm looking at your pictures yeah. and all the wonderful things you're doing and the food that you're eating and the views from your apartment and your apartment, mm -hmm. I was like, Oh, we know you to go do that. Mm -hmm. right? So it's crazy. Awesome. Like once you work for yourself, you realize like you can seriously do anything. Like right. you can wake up and decide to do anything. Of course, there's things you have to be obligated to and do, but if you can build a team, you can do anything. So what you're saying is, I think we already kind of spoiled the answer, but you could do this business no matter anywhere around the world. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and I was just thinking about that the last few days and getting restless here in Iowa again. I was like, I need to do another long trip. So well, and I was going to ask you, do you have another one planned yet? Or do you have any other? I know you've got a lot of stuff cooking at your home with all the different deals yeah. you've got working. So it's kind of hard to walk away from that. I get it. But do you have any plans? I don't. Um, I think in the next couple of months, we will do maybe like a two week trip. But I need to put like a two or three month or one month like on my calendar here soon so that I do it and it happens. And I know that those days are blocked off and I'm going. So I want to plan one soon. So then maybe what we do is we're, we'll designate some, the next deal is going to go vacation money, right? Yeah. And then you don't spend your savings. We make money for vacation, right? Yep. Absolutely. Love it. And it's so great too. Cause like one, another reason I wanted to go to Mexico is I wanted to see, can I do this remotely? 
and if I can, or if I can't, what needs to, what needs to change? So it was definitely eye-opening. Well, what did you see that you needed to maybe change a little bit when you were down there? Definitely like building a team out, um, like some of the simple stuff, like a cleaner, a handyman, um, somebody who can be boots on the ground if we need it. Just the, the things that you know, but like it really needed to solidify and kind of show me, okay, if I don't have this, here's how I can work around it. And then here's how I could do it in the future. Love that. I keep hearing the team, the team, the team. And I want to talk about that because I do get a lot of people asking, like, how did you get to where you're at when they're asking us? And I know that you do have a team of some folks like helping you out as well. So like, I think people get a little nervous about training others. So, you know, has there any tips that you can kind of give or share of some of your experience with that as far as hiring acquisitionists or dispositionists? Mm -hmm. I think also like when I first started this mentorship and you guys talked about hiring acquisitionists and dispositionists, I was like, oh my God, I am years away from that. I will never do that. Like that's crazy. <laughs> or I'll do it, but like way down the road. And then, yeah, this past fall, I have now onboarded an acquisitionist and a dispositionist right now. And it's been awesome. I've gotten like three deals from my acquisitionists and thank gosh with this mentorship, they can come to my meetings and come to your guys' team meetings and learn and see a real team in action. And that is like half of what the training is, is just seeing other people doing it and, and listening and seeing it put into action, which is awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I think that if you can hear, just like we all say, like fly on a wall, um, so much can really be absorbed through that. And, you know, as far as bringing on the team members, like I, I, I feel you on that one, because for so long, it was just him and I and our mentor finally looked at us one day, um, summer of 2020. He's like, you guys need to hire people. You, know, you can't, you're not going to get very far if it's just you guys doing everything, mm -hmm. because there's so many hats that need to be worn. So it is important to to talk to sellers and learn the roles yourself, but you did an amazing job at, would you say that prior to this, you were nervous to talk to sellers or were you pretty open as far as that? Yeah. Goes? I remember my first deal that I bought, I tried to negotiate and I was like bright red in the face. It went horrible. I was so nervous. And now I'm like, I'll get on the, I don't care. What are they going to do? Say no. <laughs> cool. I'll move on to the next. I like, I'm so much more confident. Well, and it seems like every time that we've been on calls together, like you've always had that cool, whether you were nervous or not, you've never portrayed that. And I think really, once again, if you have the right questions to ask and you mm -hmm. know how to have that intelligent conversation, you feel mm -hmm. comfortable about what you're doing. And if you feel comfortable with it, it doesn't seem as stressful. Cause I know the first few times that we both did it, mm -hmm. it felt like we were driving, you know, 200 miles an hour and everything was just <laughs> whipping by you so fast. We're like, Oh, you know, but then after it slows down and you start to, you know, yeah. what's going on. And that's another really cool part is I notice now, like when I talk, there's so many phrases or way I answer things that I've been able to absorb and, and use from seeing you. Like sometimes I'll say something, I'm like, that's literally word for word what Joe would have said. <laughs> like, um, like when I'm training my acquisitionist and they ask a good question and I give them the answer, it's just funny because I know that was the same thing a few months ago, me asking you that question and then you saying, oh, this is how I handle that objection. And then I absorb it, pass it on. So that is also a really good part of that mentorship. I love hearing that. Um, I also remember because we do a lot of social media marketing and you were not so much a fan of Facebook or social media in that regards. Can you kind of share how that has changed a little bit? <laughs> Yeah, before this mentorship, my Facebook name was, my Facebook was like highest privacy settings. Like I didn't accept any friend requests. I didn't post on Facebook. I didn't have my last name on it. Like I did not want people to find me. I didn't use it. Now I, yeah, and it took them like a, probably a month or two for me to finally make it. And now I love using it. I still don't use it enough but I've gotten multiple deals from just showing people what I do. And now I tell everybody else, like you have to be blasting what you do and who you are. So everybody knows and everybody can help you and give you deals. Um, and I think it was like maybe two or three months ago, Facebook and Instagram went down for like 24 hours and like everything I needed to do that day 
was like on Facebook. So it just like made me laugh and reflect on where I started because I need that is such an essential tool in my business now is my Facebook and my pages. And I agree completely. So my question, how much do you think you spend on marketing on average? Money? Yeah. Like none. I think I, yeah, I didn't, I got my first like five or six deals for free, which is awesome. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> you're getting deals for free by just using some social media stuff that's really, mm-hmm. it's out there. So that's awesome. I think the simplest tips and tricks from you guys that go a long, long ways and are really powerful. There's just so me. many ways to spend money on marketing to get deals, but there's so many ways to get deals for free. Mm-hmm. You just know the difference. So mm-hmm. yeah, that's a great job. But also too, to give you a shout out, if you look at your pages, like once again, A plus student, you share what you're doing, you share who you are and you're very likable. People can relate to what you've got going on and see it and they're going to get a lot of education and they're going to get obviously entertainment too by watching some of the stuff that you're up to. And uh, so bravo, because you know, you're the one once again, doing the work, right? We could say what to do, but if uh, here you are doing it, it's, it's, it's a great thing to see. Paying off for sure. And I, I have to ask, so we've seen you grow in the last year, but where do you see yourself in the next year? Um, in the next year, I see myself like really getting my wholesaling on autopilot and probably buying bigger apartment buildings that I never would have imagined like we would buy um, and maybe living abroad. <laughs> yes. I love that. Yeah, me too. Well, here's the thing is I know you are with your goals. And if you set these goals, I'm not going to say they're good as done, but they are because I know what you are like. So that's exciting. And uh, we've always talked about for a very long time is whatever your goals are, shoot higher. Yeah. Because grace is awesome. So (laughs) yeah, the first time I told you guys my cash flow goal, you were like, triple it. (laughs) Uh, Yep. Nope, triple it. (laughs) And you're looking at me and I'm like, nope, just do it. Trust me. <laughs> and that may not be enough, but go. Um, Cause yeah. whatever you want, you could have it. So. Yeah. You definitely made use of every time block that we've given you. Um, even if you were traveling or whatnot, you would just still call in. And I think that accountability was huge on your end because I think some people too, when you get into the entrepreneurship role, it is up to you, right? You have the choice of phoning it in and just doing nothing for the day, or you can make yourself do the things. And I think that can be tricky at times because sometimes we don't want to do the things, but those are what's going to progress us forward. So what gets you going and keeps you going? Um, Even the last call we had, I think you were able to go to a concert the night before, but you were still calling. You have an early slot with us. You're calling in bright and early. You know, how does (laughs) What is it inside of you that makes you still show up? Um, just knowing that like I have my goals and I have the dream life that I want to live and those goals are is, is what's going to get me there. So every day makes a difference. So use it wisely. You do. <laughs> and you do. So do you, have any, do you have any advice for future students where you know, we have some reach out to us and they're like, well, I don't know if this is the right thing for me, or I don't know if it's really, you know, if it's cost prohibitive, like, is it worth me spending that money? Um, or does it all really work? Right. So do you have any advice for future students? Yeah, I would say it's going to be worth what you put, what you put in just like anything you could pay a bunch of money and not do anything. It's not going to be worth anything. If you put in everything you've got, you're going to be like, wow, that was worth 10 times what the investment was or a hundred times what the investment was over the span of the next 20, 30 years. So I think if you're a go-getter, then this is right for you. If you can just learn something and put it in action, that is literally what it comes down to. If you're someone who's going to make moves, then absolutely do this mentorship, um, and yeah, I definitely believe in, in paying for mentorships and coaches and people who know um, who are where you want to be. So I think it's always going to be worth it if you can put in the work. And that's awesome. And that's why I always was taught is the process is great processes work, right? It's the people. Will they do the work or will they not? So you definitely put in that work 
And uh, once you got that process, so bravo. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing, Grace. It has been such a joy seeing you completely blossom into all of the good morning investments and the rent to own. I know we didn't talk too much about that, but um, you know, you did mention the the non-refundable option deposit that, that down payment, you know, compared to just renting out a property, you know, what are you able to do with that money? Mm -hmm. um, as now, you know, entrepreneur, like does that go toward more properties or you know, what, what kind of things? can you do with the, the down payment? You can do whatever you want with it. Of course, for me, it definitely goes towards more properties. Um, but yeah, I can't believe like the first two rent to own properties I got, I got like a $14,000 down payment and a $7,000 down payment. That's $21,000 that like, I wouldn't have known how to make without this mentorship. So like, that's crazy when I think about it. That was um, not that far into it. And those were my first two ever. So that was awesome. And yeah, you can use it on whatever you want because it's non-refundable and it's your money. And you still got that mailbox money every month too, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Yep. And then it, the properties are still going to cash flow every month, which is amazing. I think I did the math the other day. Um, and I cash flow like $800 off one of my rent owns, <laughs> which is crazy. Is that one of the house that you bought on terms? Bought it on terms. It was full of crap. I didn't move a single thing out. And the family put $7,000 down and moved in with it filled to the brim with the previous seller stuff. And uh, <laughs> you didn't have to use your own credit or a bank to buy that last house? No, I think it cost me twenty five hundred dollars out of pro out of pocket to pay for the closing costs, and so, that's it. Well, yeah. insurance and insurance, which is like forty five dollars a month, but that's included in my. I think the rent is eleven hundred. My payment is three hundred, and my insurance is fifty. So, Bravo. not bad. So you bought all. a piece of real estate with twenty five hundred dollars, mm -hmm. making you seven thousand dollars after you bought it. So you actually got paid to buy that property. Mm -hmm. It also pays you another $800 a month. Yep. Crazy. Not and that money. property without knowing creative financed, I would have looked at it and said, no way would I buy that. Would it make sense to be a fix and flip? It wouldn't make sense to be buy and hold. I mean, it wasn't, it needed fixed up, but with creative finance, I made a deal out of it where somebody else couldn't. Bravo. And you're helping somebody become a homeowner. That Yep. And the sellers, I doubled their previous offer in terms of purchase price. They were ecstatic to wow. over my offer. Wow. And then so. if you do the math on that deal, I think we've spoke about this one, how you're able to turn a deal that nobody else could do, pay double what everybody else can. And that deal for you over the term is going to be an absolutely amazing yeah. deal. So it could be like almost a six figure deal if I have it the whole term that we put in our contract. Not a bad for a $2,500 investment. <laughs> mm -hmm. So once you knew, know better, you do better. Absolutely. And, uh, there's yeah. a prime example of that. So this yeah. is why another reason, Grace, why you are a superstar and we give you the superstar badge for that. <laughs> you got, uh, I've said this about you since day one is Grace is awesome and she does awesome stuff. Thanks. So, yeah. And we look forward to seeing you continue to just grow. And just, my gosh, I don't where abroad do you think you'll go? Which country do you have your eyes on? Do you have any idea? Uh, I have a little with big brothers, big sisters. And this morning we went to Encanto, which is in Col set in Colombia. And I was, the whole movie, all I could think about was, I need to move to Colombia. <laughs> I haven't seen that one yet. That's a good movie. It. Well, awesome. you keep on expiring us on these places you're living so we could do something too. So yeah. we're trying to find out what your next move is so we could figure out what we're going to do too, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's awesome. awesome. Well, keep doing everything that you're doing and more. And I know you're inspiring a lot of other investors out there and you have a women's investing meetup and you have retreats. So where can people find you when you know they want to figure out a little bit more about how to connect? Yeah. A great spot is my Instagram, which is grace.investing. And I have links to our meetups and our retreats and stuff. And that'd be a good spot to find me. Awesome. Because you just had an awesome retreat. Yeah. And I mean, awesome, awesome. Mm -hmm. 
great. So uh, that one, guys weren't allowed, so I was jealous, but it looked great <laughs> from my view as far as all the, 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 the place you held it at, the venue. And yeah. uh, she's got another one coming up in Orlando. Is that one sold out yet? No, not yet. It's in November. There's still some spots left. And then we have one that sold out in June in Denver. Yes, I heard about that one. Awesome. Well, I'm trying to figure out if we're going to be back in Florida by then or if we're going to be trying to wrap up things in New York. Yeah, <laughs> I haven't signed up yet. Yeah, let me know. We would love to have you. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much, Grace, for your time. I know you're a busy gal and uh, keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. Yes, thank you, guys. Thanks for everything. Thank you so much, Grace. Thank you.